Views expressed by Camaplan podcast guests may not reflect those of Camaplan. Camaplan does not guarantee the accuracy of information provided by guests, nor does it endorse or recommend any individual or organization. Camaplan is not an investment advisor, CPA, realtor, or attorney. You are encouraged to conduct your own due diligence before making investment choices. For any tax, legal, accounting, investment, or other questions, please consult a specialist. Hi, I'm Michael Duncan, and welcome back to The Road to Financial Freedom. This podcast is brought to you by Camaplan, a self-directed IRA administrator focused on educating investors on how to grow retirement savings faster through alternative investments. In each episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at the many roads taken to financial freedom and how they differ for each of our guests. Our goal is to help the listeners learn how they can achieve their own financial freedom through the experience and stories of experts that have done just that. Today's guest is a wife, mother of three, and entrepreneur. She's also the co-founder of the Streamline team and host of Wealth by Choice podcast. When her husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, it was an eye-opening moment for both of them, one that led them down a path towards learning more about real estate investing, networking, and ultimately building businesses from scratch. Since then, they overcame their limiting mindsets and began to see how many things in their lives were now changing for the better. I am very excited to welcome Valerie Shire to the show. Valerie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Michael. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Yeah. No, I was really excited to have you. Uh, You know, your email landed in my inbox. I read a little bit about you uh, and I just thought that you'd make a great guest for this show. I think your story uh, is really interesting. I'm personally looking forward to learning even more about you. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we were talking a little before the show and we were talking about how life just kind of changes. And sometimes you think that you have things planned out. And that's not what happens. Other things kind of throw you a curveball. And that's kind of what happened with us. So I would love to just get right into that. Um, and, you know, feel free to share as much or as little as you'd like about, you know, this, the, the beginning process. Uh, but really just, you know, you were a stay at home mother. And obviously that's a full time job in itself. Uh, and then your husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. What? I don't know how to ask this right, but, but what changed? What happened? And how quickly did those things happen? Well, you know, <clears throat> sometimes you think that you've got long term dreams, you've got these goals and you're going to get there someday and you may give them a decent amount of attention or you may not. But when something like this happens, it kind of escalates everything and it makes you pursue that at a rate you would not have before. And that's kind of what happened to us. So, yeah, going back, stay at home, mom, we have three little kids. I'm trying to think my youngest was, I think, two at the time. So two, two year old, four year old, six year old, stay home mom. We were going to homeschool our kids just starting, you know, my oldest one in like preschool. And we just started noticing that my husband's arm just started having some type of something wrong with it. At the time, we didn't know it was a tremor. We just yeah. knew there was something wrong. He was really struggling writing because it was his right arm. And, you know, I mean, months kind of went by and we kind of, I guess they say ignored it. And then we finally decided to go to a doctor and they sent him to a neurologist and I'll never forget. They said Parkinson's disease. And it was just kind of like, yeah, okay, that there's no way he's 35 years old. Yeah. It was a shock. And at the time we had knew we had learned, we had learned a little bit about real estate. We didn't really know a whole lot about any about, about it at all. And I'll be honest, I had worked for my dad in construction book, you know, do bookkeeping and sometimes, you know, painting and stuff like that. But I didn't have a degree. I did not have something to fall back on. My husband, he was a heavy equipment operator. And so when we got that news, it really helped us just open our eyes to the fact that we're solely dependent on one thing, him being able to operate. And we never really looked at that before. We were kind of Dave Ramsey um, type, you know, we're saving our money. We're, you know, doing those baby steps. We were trying to get out of debt, you know, making sure that it was just our house that we were paying off. And we did not realize what a vulnerable spot we were actually putting ourselves in by doing, by only relying on his W-2 income. And so that's when I started like listening, bigger pockets. I read the rich dad, poor dad, the Bible of real estate. And we started looking into that as kind of like the alternative. We just felt like he obviously had some years left that he could operate, but 
you kind of need your arm, especially with operating heavy equipment on the road, you know, with people around, it's, it's a safety issue. So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of like the beginning, what you had asked as far as like what changed, it was that it was just the realization that W2 does not always last as long as you think it's going to. Yeah. Um, it's funny, you know, I was, it's not funny, but I was telling you this before the show. Um, my father was diagnosed with Parkinson's a few years back. He was, I think 62 or 63 around there. And that, you know, that always was considered young. You know, every time I'm mm -hmm. talking to someone about it, you know, they're like, wow, that's really young, you know, mm -hmm. especially with what he was dealing with. Um, and then I saw your email and I saw I read a little bit about you and I saw the age 35 and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, that really it hit home in a lot of ways. But I, I can actually, you know, I can really understand, um, you, know, you know, the changes that you're going through and um, having dealt with it firsthand with my father, you know, understanding how quickly things are going to change. But at the same time, not knowing how quickly because Parkinson's does not have a a straight line. It's very unpredictable in the way that it advances or doesn't advance. I mean, my dad had little to no advancements for about three years. And then all of a sudden it got a lot worse very quickly. And mm -hmm. that's just the reality. And he did not, well, he actually did do something sort of like operating heavy machinery, but um, mm -hmm. he was more or less retired by that point already. So I can definitely understand the shock and probably the terror I would assume that came along with hey, this thing that we were planning on having and depending on, mm -hmm. there's now a time limit on it and we don't know right. what it is. It, you know, you're touching on the most scary part about it is you don't know what it is. And in all honesty, stress is one of the most damaging uh, or escalate. It'll really escalate the disease. And mm -hmm. we kind of seen that. I mean, we were kind of thrown into that. And I was extremely stressed because I felt like, I, you know, eventually I'm going to have to figure out how to provide for the family if this progresses quickly. We, we had no idea. And so I felt really stressed and we felt like we have to do real estate. We have to do it yesterday. And at the time we were kind of learning about the single family, you know, maybe looking into wholesaling. We looked at short term rentals and then. Um, at the time, I think I, I had seen an ad for like a multifamily mastermind and I, I never, I didn't really know much about multifamily real estate. And so I brought it to my husband, we were talking about, it. I was like, you know what? I really think that this is probably the way we need to go because it's scalable. You know, we can get multiple properties and not have to just, you know, do one property a year. And so that's kind of the, the lane we decided to go. Um, in the process, we kind of combined that with short term rentals and we do kind of like the midterm rentals, but it was definitely scary. And, and it really woke me up. And the fact that, you know, as a, as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, I need to be able to have something to fall back on. You don't, you don't know. I mean, somebody could, you could break your arm, break your leg and you're laid up or, or just have some type of injury that, you know, will make you unable to work that W2 job. Like, what are you going to do at that point? And so, you know, that's, that's why I'm a big advocate for real estate investing. And yeah, I call it skill stacking. I, I love the, the, the idea of learning and, and being able to provide value in some way that you can fall back on that, whether you're starting your own company or, you know, working W2, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to make sure you've got multiple layers in there so that you have options. And that's what we didn't have at the time. So how long was it until you got to a point where, you know, I don't know if he's still working that job. I, I, I don't know how long it's been. Um, but like, I guess at what point did you start to notice or start to realize that, you know, this could, this is probably the answer. This is the career that is going to hopefully take us through the end of, you know, that other job. Yeah, that's a funny question. And here's something that it was a mindset shift. And I'm a huge mindset advocate because a lot of times we don't realize why we're where we are or we don't even realize we have an option and it's because of our mindset we're stuck at a certain point and for us um we kind of we felt like um our only option was to either find something that i could do at home while raising the kids or you know <sighs> somehow invest in something. I and mean, it was kind of limited okay. because I, I, you know, if, if I'm going to work and provide, I have to either get a high income earning job. Well, you've got to get degrees. And I just did not see that happening in a short amount of time, or I have to be able to start a business or start something because if you're paying for day daycare, there goes your, there goes your wages. And yeah. so 
it was hard. We kind of looked at our options. We looked at different business business ideas. And, and that's where we kind of felt like real estate. And so once we got we, our first property, it was a fourplex. We ended up buying a fourplex and we did like the midterm rentals with it, traveling nurse, medical student. And so we had kind of the best of both worlds. We had four units, cash flowing a little higher than normal. And when we got our first check, you know, our, our first check from the property, from the tenants, it was from Airbnb because we were using, you know, that as one of the platforms. I think maybe that was the moment that we were like, it works. <laughs> I mean, it does work. Okay. I think we can do this. And, and I think that this could be something that we could do, you know, even if we pick up, you know, at the time we were thinking one fourplex or a duplex, pick up some small multi-property each year. I think that this will work, but two things. Number one, we didn't realize how much work they are, especially if you're self-managing yeah. and then you're doing like the Airbnb and all that on top of it, it's extremely time consuming. And the other thing is you run out of money. I know everybody says you hear different places. You don't need lots of money to invest in real estate. You just need these skills. But in reality, you're either making a career in real estate and you're, you're wholesaling to get cash. You're doing asset management. You're doing syndication. You're doing something to generate that cash. You do need something coming in. And so those kind of things kind of brought us to a stop after I think it was two years. I think it was two years. We're kind of like ran out of money and we're maxed out as far as our time. He was still working full time. And I'm still at that point, I'm trying to homeschool two kids at home, run Airbnbs. And I was just absolutely wore thin. And I said to my husband one day, I said, I can't do it. I don't know what else we're going to do. I don't have a plan day, plan B. But I can't do this. I, I just, it's too much. I don't know how many times you know, we spend crying myself to sleep trying to think of how to fix this problem. And I think at that time, that's when we had heard about like a virtual assistant. And at the time, I didn't even know what that was. But we kind of did some research and found some different places you could find virtual assistants. And we landed on the Philippines, which I decided to get one. Had some ups and downs. It was definitely a process because I had no idea what I was doing. But that one thing really did change the way that we ran our business and the and the amount of stuff that we could take on. And so that was another pivoting moment for us um, as far as our, our journey goes. Yeah, I mean, you beat me to it. The next thing I was going to ask about was the virtual assistant thing. And it's interesting that um, I guess I didn't realize the timing of it and how you were kind of getting to the point of almost no return. Uh, you mm -hmm. were maxed out both physically and mentally and uh monetarily i guess mm -hmm. um so i guess how in what ways uh did the virtual assistants help and i guess for those that don't know that are in a position like you that didn't necessarily know what a virtual assistant is like can you just give like a brief definition almost yeah yeah sure so it's just basically somebody in my case from the philippines who helps me virtually they help they at the time i hired her and i had her help with the short-term rentals she was going to help message guests automate those messages she would log into my um, programs and just kind of keep up with things she helped me sort emails and go through things so we were looking at properties so she helped my husband we were using podio as like a you know to um as a crm for the properties as we were looking for them she would look at the properties and then my husband would wake up in the morning and he'd just have all the ones that meet the criteria that we had shared with her. Um, we had a bunch of different things, but they were more admin task type things. And it just took a lot off my plate. And after we, I mean, I'll be honest, the first month or two that it was almost harder because I was training her. But after that month or two, that's when I started to actually feel some relief. And I was like, Oh my word, this is gold. Like, I could do this in a lot of different areas, not just the area that I hired her for. Yeah. And so I got as many things off my plate as I could. And then I kind of ran out of things and I was just like, what else could I ever do? I'm still so busy. I felt like I still had to do everything. And so what I did, and I really, I highly recommend this to any of your listeners. If you don't know what you could have a virtual assistant do, start by writing down what you do every day. You know, you can do every 15 minutes, every half an hour, every hour, you know, just write down what you're doing. And it it may be a little painful for me. It was like, wow, that's a lot of time on Facebook. That's just garbage time. I don't need that time. You know, it, it just helped me see where am I spending my time? 
And I started to notice that a lot of it was in actually grading school as my kids were getting older and you know, spending hours grading this. And it's, it's not hard stuff. They're not in high school. It's just, you know, beginner stuff, but it was yeah. still time going over all these papers. And I, I remember saying to my husband the one night, if I could just get her to grade school, I would have so much more time. And we were like, well, why can't we? And so I ended up scanning my answer keys, putting them on a Google Drive, and I have like a virtual camera that my kids actually come in. They slide their book into the camera and she'll go over the, the answers with them. And then she kind of types up a, a report card and I go over anything that they had issues with. And that was that was a lifesaver for me. You know, it allowed me to still homeschool them, but it took the most time consuming part of homeschooling off my plate. And so that's why I really like to encourage people don't get stuck in the box of thinking a virtual assistant can check emails. You know, you might think of the five most common tasks. They can actually do anything that if you can get it on the phone or a computer, they could probably take it off your plate. And that was just that was so exciting for me. That was a that was an eye opening moment for me. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. I never personally would have uh, been creative enough to even think about, you know, utilizing that in that way. And um it's, it sounds a lot like having like a TA in like a college class. You know, they do all the things that the professors may be a little bit too busy to do. But at the end of the day, the professor is still the one that's doing all the teaching. You know, their knowledge exactly. is still extremely important. The mm -hmm. TA in some ways is just there to do the stuff the professor doesn't want to do or to take time off their plate because they've got other stuff to do. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and as we've grown, I actually have two full-time virtual assistants now. You know, it's like I, I'm constantly finding more things. And one of the biggest things that I, I've i recently within the past year is social media. You know, all of us, you can't get away from it. It's there. It's part of our lives. You've got to embrace it. And I'm not a big social media person. You know, I mean, I'll get on Facebook and scroll here and there. But to create content, I always have struggled with that. And so that's something that we implemented last year. And it's... Uh, Alana, my VA, has done amazing. You know, I'll send her pictures of my family. I'll send her pictures of us looking at properties. You know, I sent her last night. We were on an underwriting pod. You know, I sent a little, I took a little video of it, sent it to her. She created content out of it. And so that's been the most recent thing that we've used the virtual assistant for. And like I said, the, the ideas are endless. There's so many things that you can implement them into your business with. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right about, you know, getting out of the box of what you would kind of assume a virtual assistant is used for what they can do. Um, and really just getting out of that, getting out of the limiting beliefs, because, you, you know, you're proving sentence by sentence here that you really can use them in a lot of different ways. And uh, I can see how that would be an absolute boon for your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, about a year or so after we started using her, you know, I was networking with different investors and I. Um, had met, her name is Helen, uh, at, I think it might have just been a networking event. And we got kind of got to know each other, became friends and, and ended up getting on with her and her husband, Alex, and my husband, Jonathan. And we all were getting on and we were talking about, we were getting on to talk about real estate, but we ended up just talking about virtual assistants. They had, I think at the time, eight virtual assistants, wow. in chiropractors business and real estate business. And so that's all we talked about, just how it changed our lives. And yeah. And I said to him at one point, I said, you know, Alex, I really believe that more people would use virtual assistants if one, they were easier to find, you know, and, and, and to get through, because I mean, when I put a, an ad out there for one, I mean, I had, I don't remember exactly. It was like a hundred applications. I had no experience interviewing. I didn't really even know what to look for. And so I kind of just picked one and, you know, if it, I felt like if it were easier to get one, a good fit, and then also, if it were easier to train them and to to know what you're looking for and to have a little bit of guidance, I feel like a lot more people would use them. And so at the end of the call, we ended up to deciding to go ahead and create a company that does that, a, a virtual assistant agency. And that's what we've kind of done with the Streamline team. And I think the most exciting part about it is being able to help people implement them into their businesses the way that we have in ours and give a little guidance, you know, these ideas that we've implemented, these different ways that we've used them. And, and so that's kind of what the Streamline team is about. And, and that's what, you know, we've kind of been doing this year. And it's exciting to see it grow and, and be able to see and help other investors as well in their journey. So what kind of things are you looking for when you're trying to match um, the virtual assistants with the companies or even when you're looking to find one for yourself? Like, what are the, the things that you're looking for? Yeah, I would say 
basically the first thing we do is if we're say you say you want a, a virtual assistant, I say, Michael, let's talk about what do you do? What are you doing every day? Kind of like what we talked about, you know, writing down. If you if you have wrote down, that's really helpful. But if not, you might say, well, hey, I'm looking for somebody to help me with underwriting. You know, I do I underwrite a lot of deals and I just need somebody to get those numbers in the spreadsheet, see if it passes a specific criteria and then give it to me. You know, and so we would talk about that. You know, is there anything else that you're looking for? And you say, well, my emails are overloaded. So what about emails? And so we just kind of talk through with them and see what are all the things that they're thinking that, that maybe they need help with. And then we help them really. Um, kind of get them down into the skill set groups because you may have a virtual assistant who's really good at underwriting, which would be more like data entry, but they may not be a content creator. That's more artsy. I mean, yeah. they're completely different skill sets. And so we help people understand that. I did not know that at the time. And so, I mean, I was having my VA jump from homeschooling to messaging and like I had her doing everything. And so we really break that down and help them see which skill sets fit together and that's one thing we look at when we're putting our ads out. I mean, we, we interview hundreds of VAs. We have VAs interviewing VAs, you know, before, because they have certain criteria that they yeah. have to pass before they even get to us. And I mean, there's so many things that, you know, you could put them through different tests, different things to see if they're paying attention. You know, we like to do multiple interviews to see if they show up on time, to see if they're um communicating on time you know is it three days before you hear back from them well that's not going to work so mm -hmm. different things like that can really help you make sure you're making a good decision on who you're hiring and i have to imagine that you know as opposed to when you went and found a virtual assistant by yourself like having a company do that for you probably would have been a big help because like you said like you didn't know what you were looking for you didn't fully understand the way that you could use virtual assistants and you didn't understand or I'm sorry, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. It's probably often that people don't necessarily understand what the red flags are or the things that are good to look for in terms of like doing multiple interviews. So they're showing up on time, like how different, you know, working with someone across the world can be. Mm -hmm. if that's not something you've done before like it's it's different even than you know just working with someone who's in their home office mm -hmm. uh you know 20 minutes away or something uh so i can imagine that a lot of companies that you know or, or anyone who comes and talks to you about that kind of stuff probably don't even necessarily know how important a lot of these things are right you're you're absolutely right i knew nothing i mean it, even when i think back to the first few months that i had her i don't know how many times i wanted to quit i was like this is not working i felt like in the beginning i was like i can do it so much faster why am i paying her to do this yeah. you know and it's taking her twice as long three times as long and i just didn't understand even how to train her i did i didn't even know you know for example you know if, if i'm going to get on the call with her now we're going to video the call. I'm not going to show her five yeah. times. We're going to put on video and she can refer back to the video. You yeah. know, those little things that I just did not even think about or, or realize. And, you know, having her do something with me while I watch her do it. And then, you know, slowly taking over piece by piece. It was kind of, I was just throwing tasks at her, you know, hoping that she could sink or swim. Yeah. And, you know, when I look back, First off, it's amazing. She's actually still with me today. You know, she's stayed with me. We've worked through things and, you know, it's great looking back. But at the time, there were many times I thought, I just don't know if I can keep doing this. You know, I felt like it was kind of not working for the first few months at least. And then when it finally did, I felt like, wow, I'm running out of task. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should go down to part time. Well, that's one thing that we actually talk to our clients and I'm so thankful I didn't because what happens is they have to still provide for their family. So yeah. they're going to go look for another job. And I could have lost her if I would have done that. And I'm so grateful I didn't. But those are things people don't know. You know, a lot of yeah. them the times they'll say, can we start part time and then go full time? And it's like, well, the reason we don't and as an agency, we actually only do full time. But you know, the reason we don't do the part time is because you really want somebody who's dedicated to you, yeah. who's going to get to know not just your company, but you. I mean, if they're say you're doing social media, you want them representing you and you want to they want to know the way you talk, the way you communicate, the way you're you want to appear in front of the world. And it's a little hard to do that when you're you've got two, three, four clients yeah. and your attention is divided. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. 
uh, it just it makes a ton of sense. Um, and so what, el what else was challenging and how did you overcome those challenges when it came to training the virtual assistant? Obviously, you, I'm assuming you're a lot better at it now uh, than you were when you started. Um, so I guess what are the changes that you've made uh, other than the things you've already mentioned? Yeah, I would say the first thing is expect to spend at least an hour or, you know, I mean, depending on what you're hiring them for, definitely depending on what you're hiring them for, but spending time every day in the beginning. You know, I just, I didn't really know what to expect. And I just kind of would send her task and people have even come to us and they're like, they're having issues and all they're doing is just emailing a task here and there. And there's no communication. What do you think if you hired somebody here in the States or if you had a brick and mortar company and you hire somebody, you're going to train them. You're going to yeah. physically be with them and you're going to say, hey, here's how you run the cash register. This is how you count your change. This is how you scan things. And you're going to watch them and be like, well, let's change this. Let's do that differently. But some for some reason, people expect the virtual world to just know it. And it's just not really the case. And so in the beginning, if, you know, looking back, I would have spent time with her. I would have spent blocked off even, even 15 to 20 minutes would have been, would have made my life a lot easier in the long yeah. run. Yeah. How, so with, with that in mind, and now that you're running this company and I'm assuming you're helping, helping the people that, you know, hired these virtual assistants through the hiring process and the training process, how long does it typically take before, you know, for you, you said it took two months. How long does it take for these companies of these people to really feel the change in their mm -hmm. workload due to the virtual assistants? Well, it really does depend on what you're hiring them for. Some things, you know, they can take over a lot faster. Yeah. Um, other things, you're like, for me, I'm talking, I mean, I had a lot of different things. So it took her longer to learn all these different aspects. But if you have one thing, you know, say maybe it's just social media, well, they're going to get to know you, your brand, your colors, your, you know, what you're trying to portray, what you're trying, who's your ideal avatar, your, you know, your, who are you looking to attract? They're going to get to know those things. But I think, you know, if it's one thing, they can kind of do it faster and catch on a lot faster. And then it does depend on how much time you spend with them. Yeah. But, you know, that's one thing that we really have put into the streamline team. We've actually created a course for clients and we actually buy the course too, if, even if you're not a client, but it helps people understand how to use and utilize and maximize their use, how to work with virtual assistants. And I just, I don't see any training like that out there. And so that's one thing we really wanted to, I'm passionate about, we really wanted to use in our businesses just to train people because, you know, we deal with the Philippines. I love the Filipino workers. They're amazing people. You know, I'm just as excited to provide a job for them as I am to help an investor. And so that's a passion of mine. And, you know, we want to make sure that if you get a virtual assistant, you're successful, you know, that it really helps your business and it provides a long-term job for the virtual assistant. So that's something that I'm really excited about. We actually launched this year, um, early this year. And so that's just another way that people can learn about how to use virtual assistants. Yeah, I mean, I will say, um, if you're not watching this on video and you're just listening, I can tell by the look on your face how excited you are. Um, not just about the prospect of, you know, this business that you've created, but really just the ability to help two people mutually help each other, really, mm -hmm. to put them in a position where they can do that. And the fact that you're in a position to help them do that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's pretty incredible. I mean, I just I have to give you props. there. That's really incredible. Thanks. I appreciate that. It's definitely something I, I love and I enjoy. And we, we do the real estate. We love the real estate. But this is kind of just stemmed off. And I feel like this yeah. is more of a passion of mine. And my husband does more in the real estate now. And this is actually the first year we're full time in our in our real estate. We're full time, you know, working in the virtual assistant. I do the virtual assistant agency. He works in the real estate and he's done with the equipment operating. And so it's a new phase for us. And I'm excited about it. Yeah, that was, again, you kind of beat me to the punch. My, my next question was just going to be, you know, where are you guys now? Um, so he, so this is the first year where he's done, he's retired from uh, the heavy machine operating. And you guys have two full-time businesses going strong. And you guys both work from home, I'm assuming. And are you still homeschooling? I am. And our home is, we're actually, we're about to have some major changes. Um, it's kind of crazy. We're under contract. We're supposed to actually sign tomorrow, but we're selling our house and moving into oh. a fifth wheel camper. And we're going to be traveling the States over the next, 
I say, you know, months to a year, it depends on how it goes. I said, if we, if we love it, it'll be longer. If we hate it, it'll be shorter, but we're going to take the kids and, and, and take them to see some of the big hot spots of the, of the States and hopefully enjoy these times while they're big enough. We can hike and do some fun stuff together. Anything in particular you're looking forward to? Um, I love the Grand Canyon. I've been there, but the kids have never been there. In fact, Jonathan hasn't been there. And so I'm really excited about going and seeing that with them. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, well, before I let you plug yourself and tell the listeners where they can find you, uh, one question I like to ask every guest that comes on uh, this podcast is simply, what does financial freedom mean to you? Uh, I love that question. And financial freedom to me means kind of, it's a bigger freedom than financial. The finances fund the life. And so financial freedom to me is being able to live the life that you want to live. You're not, not being stressed about where, where's food coming from tomorrow? Where's, you know, how, how are we going to be able to take a vacation this year? How am I paying for my kid's college? That to me is financial freedom is being able to have the freedom to make the choices in life that you, that mean the most to you and that you really want things you want to do places you want to go. That to me is financial freedom. Absolutely. Like being able to uh, spend months or a year on the road. Yeah. Which is, I'm, that sounds pretty exciting. Uh, that's going to be awesome. An awesome experience for those kids, something that they will hopefully remember for the, for the rest of their lives. So um, sure. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for them. Um, but Valerie, please tell the listeners where they can find you, uh, where they can listen to your podcast uh, and how to get in contact with you. Sure. So my podcast is Wealth by Choice Podcast. Um, my name is Valerie Shira. I'm on the social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can email me at Valerie at the streamline team.com. And yeah, shoot me a message. I'd love to chat. I'm going to hopefully be documenting our journey as we go. So if you want to follow along, hit me up. We'll get you connected. I'm looking forward to following along. Um, and, uh, yeah, of course, all that information will be in the description of this episode, both, uh, on your, uh, podcast streaming platforms, as well as YouTube. Um, Valerie, thank you so much for coming on. I had a wonderful time talking to you and getting to know you and learning more about your story and, uh, learning a lot about virtual assistants as well. Um, and really, I think realizing that I definitely took for granted what they, you know, the possibilities of what they can do. For sure. Well, thank you, Michael. It's been such a such a pleasure to be here today. And as always, thank you for listening to The Road to Financial Freedom. If you enjoyed this show, please support the podcast by remembering to rate, review, and subscribe. You can keep up to date with us on Facebook or Instagram at Road to Financial Freedom Podcast. Thanks again, and I will see you all next time. If you like what you're hearing on The Road to Financial Freedom and want to learn more about self-directed IRAs and 401ks, click the link in the description to download a free toolkit with everything you need to get started.